All right. Good, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us to learn more about the University of Richmond. Uh, before I turn it over to our presenter this evening, I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping items. Uh, students, your cameras and microphones are off. If you'd like to ask a question to our presenter, please use the Q&A function. Um, also, please remember to sign up for any additional PACAC sessions that you might be interested in at www.pacac.org slash virtual. A uh, recording of tonight's presentation will be available for viewing on PACAC's website within one week of tonight. Uh, Priscilla, take it away. All right. Hi, I am Priscilla Green. Um, I am your admission officer. I read applications for Pennsylvania and also New Jersey and Delaware. Um, I'm going to, well, there is no chat, so I will not be able to give you my email address, but it will be at the end of my presentation. So if you have any questions, of course, that you think of after tonight and you would like to email me, that is perfectly fine. So right now I'm gonna share my screen. This here is one of my favorite shots of Richmond. Um, I've been there since 2006. So the lake has been always something that I walk around every, uh, every lunch hour. And so it's just an absolute beautiful 350 acre campus, very park-like, uh, very Harry Potter-esque, I like to say. Um, if you've not had a chance to visit Richmond, there's a few ways you can still do that. Um, we do allow folks on campus. We just can't uh, allow folks to come into the buildings. So if you come on campus, you can grab a walking tour map at our Queely Center parking lot. You can put on a mask and walk the campus. If you um, are there and the weather's not so great, you can also use a QR code, get in your car and drive the campus. Uh, last but not least, there's an opportunity on our actual website to um, sign up for an admission and aid and a live tour. Uh, the tour itself is not live, but two of our campus tour guides will be there and they can answer questions. They can tell you why they chose Richmond. They can give you the ins and outs of the social scene and the academic life and really tell you some of their favorite places on campus. Richmond is centrally located in the state of Virginia. We are two hours from the beach, two hours from mountains, and two hours from DC. Um, not only is it great that you can do a day trip at DC, you can also do a internship because it is so close to campus. If you look in that far haze, you can see the skyline of the city of Richmond. We're only six miles from downtown. Um, and we have a shuttle system that can take you back and forth. It can also take you in the surrounding areas. So by no means are you campus locked. Um, you have a lot of fun things to do on campus as well as off campus. This is Tyler Haynes Common. It is the building that spans the lake. Um, to me, this is the student hub. Uh, you can get you a, a mean cup of coffee, a smoothie. You can get a chicken buffalo wrap. You can go to our little um, sit down restaurant. You can hear a band. You can see a movie. You can play foosball. You can get some spider swag at the bookstore. You can go to the Center for Civic Engagement and check out your community service opportunities. And you can also go to student development and look at all of the uh, clubs and organizations we have. Now for me, uh, what I love to do when it snows is I go down and I plant myself in front of one of those glass windows. They get me a hot chocolate and I open up my laptop and I work and watch the snow fall. Um, if you think the campus is beautiful now, you should see it with a couple inches of snow on it. It's really beautiful. These are the um, three colleges that pertain to undergrad. Uh, by design, uh, we have it so that all students come in undecided. Uh, we do that because we don't really expect you at this point to know what you wanna be when you grow up, right? You don't even know what's really uh, your opportunities are. So when you come on as a freshman, come in undecided, you'll fall under that School of Arts and Sciences for your gen ed courses. Uh, and then you have that opportunity to talk to career services, talk to current students, talk to uh, faculty members, and really get an idea of what your opportunities are. As you can see, two thirds of our students will double major, major minor, or major minor minor in all three colleges. For Robbins School of Business, if that's uh, the route that you would like to go in, there is no separate application. There is an intent form. So they're gonna ask you to do a few things for them. They're gonna want you to maintain a 2.7 GPA. They're gonna want you to take a prerequisite in accounting, uh, calculus and econ, and they're also going to want you to do an Excel proficiency test, okay? So once you do that, uh, then you're in the Robbins School of Business and you're hit the ground running your junior year. Jepson School of Leadership, that is something we pioneered in 1992. It uh, teaches you like theory and practice behind great leaders. You learn things like ethics in the workplace. You learn things like social justice. Um, it's a great 
uh, complement to anything that you go in at Richmond. You can do it as a major or minor. The most important piece to that <clears throat> to this is, is if you have these important leadership skills in your back pocket when you graduate, not only does it look phenomenal on your resume, but it also really gives you a leg up because not many people at your age graduating in that year are going to have these important leadership skills. And so um, you're definitely going to be sought after when you go out there to look for a job. Uh, there is a separate application for the Jepson School of Leadership. Um, they're going to require a 3.0. They're going to also require Jepson 101 and 102, and they're going to require two recommendation letters, one from a Jepson faculty member and one from any other UR faculty. Study abroad. We are huge proponents of study abroad, okay? And we really make it easy on you. It's as if you're attending Richmond. So if you have merit aid or if you have a um, financial aid package, it goes with you. Um, the other great thing is, is we also give you a thousand dollar stipend. So you can use that for your visa, your airfare, or to do something fun off campus. When you visit the International Education Building, they will help you with all of those things. They'll help you pick out your program, your visa, your airfare. The, typically, most of our students do travel abroad their junior year. And the reason why is because by that second semester of their sophomore year, they've declared their major. So now they have a really good idea of what they wanna do when they graduate. So this, this way they can pick their program based on the experience or based on the type of classes that you can take overseas. Here are some of our lovely spiders that have already traveled the world. Uh, the group there you see in Italy, that is our field hockey team. Uh, even athletics is very committed to make sure that our athletes get a, an opportunity to study abroad. And the reason why is because we want all of our spiders to be global citizens. So that's why we really make uh, going uh, overseas very affordable and very uh, easy for you to do because we really do want our spiders to be global citizens. The Richmond Guarantee. So the Richmond Guarantee was started about six years ago with our, our career services. What was happening was our students were finding these great uh, internship opportunities, great research opportunities, but they were low paying or no paying. And unfortunately our students could take, a, uh, take the opportunity to do that because you know they, they couldn't work for free. So what we have guaranteed, right, for any approved internship is $10 an hour, 40 hours a week for 10 weeks. So you were guaranteed that $4,000 funding. You would do this typically over a summer and you can do more than one. So my son is a sophomore at University of Richmond and over this past summer, by the way, he's the rock star, uh, not me. Uh, over the summer, he was able to work with Carol Parrish, Dr. Parrish, who runs the chemistry lab. She is doing um, some research on opiates and the opiate crisis and opiate addiction. And so Travis was able to sit right here he built a computer program that actually built simulated models. He looked at all the receptors. He looked at all of the uh, molecules and hydrogen bonds and all those things and really was able to give her some real information um, that she's never been able to collect before. So not only did he uh, earn that $4,000 uh, at the age of 19, he's gonna be co-published with the work that he has and he has a patent on the computer program that he's written. So when you come on campus, even your freshman year, the faculty are really gonna encourage you to do any type of research in any of the three colleges. The reason why, number one, it, would, it could solidify where the direction you wanna go in, right? Or number two, it could absolutely change your direction. So Travis came into Richmond with kind of a nod towards chemistry, and now he's going to be double majoring in uh, quantum chemistry with that computer science degree. So it really did solidify uh, the direction he wants to go in. Student involvement, that's that building that spans the lake. We do have over 180 student clubs and organizations. One of the big questions I get, do we have Greek life? We do, but Richmond's a little different in two ways. Number one, you are not allowed to rush your fall semester of your freshman year. They really want you to get in there, get your feet wet, get acclimated, meet your friends, get involved in some clubs. Then you can rush your spring semester of your freshman year. The other thing that makes us a little different is that we do not have a live-in situation for sorority and fraternity. Sisterhood's there, the brotherhood's there. It's just as a Greek member, you're also living in dorms with non-Greek members, okay? Uh, we are division one sports. I like to say we're, we're, we're small but mighty. We like to run with the big dogs. 
okay? So game day, you come out, do your face painting, do your tailgating, you attend the game, it is no additional charge to you. So although we are a small liberal arts college, um, it really has a big campus feel, uh, especially on uh, game day. If you're not being recruited for division one sports, but you still have that you know, uh, competitive edge in you, you can do a sports club and you can find out all about our sports club, all about our championship sports clubs, all of those on our rec and wellness website. As I said, we are a small liberal arts institution. Uh, we have 3000 undergrad. I can tell you, um, I am a Hokie. Uh, I graduated from Virginia Tech. I had 14,000 in my freshman class. And I can say after being at Richmond for a very long time and having my son go there, the opportunities that you have at Richmond um, just cannot be matched. The, the fact that I had three and 400 students in my classroom, yet Travis has had 10, uh, it's, it's amazing. So he has an opportunity not only to know his classmates, he has a great collaborative relationship with his faculty member. He even went to one of his faculty members last year for Thanksgiving. So it's just a very tight knit collaborative relationship. That eight to one student ratio is real, especially after you um, declare your major because you're more specialized. The most you ever see in a classroom is uh, 25 at most. The building that you see right there, that is the Boatwright Memorial Library. If you ever need to um, stay up all night and, and steady, go to the 815 Cafe and get a double shot of espresso and it will keep you up all night. This is a class of 2024. So my seniors out there, this is the student profile for if you are applying this year. Uh, out of that 836, believe it or not, the majority of the students are on campus and they are attending classes in person. We did have a small amount of folks that decided, hey, I'm going to learn remotely, which is fine. We had another small group that said, you know what, I'm just taking the whole entire year off. So one of the big questions I get is, is it going to affect application season this year? It will not. We're gonna read applications like we always have. We're still gonna go for a class of 836 to 841. Out of that 836, we've had 650 different high schools. So if you're worried about coming to Richmond and not know anybody, you're not gonna be alone. I guarantee you're gonna find your peeps in the first two weeks while you're on campus. You're gonna meet them in the dorm, in the dining hall, in classes, in clubs, in organizations. You will meet your folks, okay? Also out of that 836, we had 37 different states and 38 different countries, right? So we a eclectic, diverse, kind of melting pot, real tight knit um, community at Richmond. And it really does give you an opportunity to meet somebody that you wouldn't have a chance to meet otherwise. Here's the student profile of that same group. Okay, so for the GPA, this is what we do. We recalculate all GPAs to a UR GPA. So what does that mean? We strip it of all AP and dual enrollment, okay? We put it on a four point scale. We are leveling the playing field. So every time I read an application, application, application. All the GPAs are based on the same unweighted 4.0 scale. Now, do we still consider AP and dual enrollment? We sure do. That is a part of the application. That's the rigor part of the application. And we just wanna know that you're taking the most rigorous coursework at your high school. There you see the SAT and ACT right down the middle. All right, we super score both the SAT and the ACT. Okay, we don't prefer one test or the other. Now, important for this year, my seniors that are out there, we are test optional for this year only. So what does that mean? At Richmond, if you indicate yes on your application, you want us to review scores, you have to send us scores. You cannot change your mind. If you say no on your application, that will then make you test optional. Does it hurt you? No, it will not hurt your application, but it does give you the freedom to change your mind and send in uh, scores, especially if you're looking to apply by November 1 for early action, but you're taking a November uh, test. When those results come in, you do have that opportunity to self-report them and I'll tell you how to do it. Holistic admissions. So we looked at the whole ball of wax. I look at everything that you send me. For me, the essays are extremely important. Since I'm the one that's reading the <clears throat> application, I'm the one that's rendering decision, I'm the one that's going to be bringing it in front of the committee. I really rely on essays to let me know who you are, all right? You have one uh, essay through Common App. We have three prompts, you pick one. I don't care what the topic is. I'm gonna look for an authentic and genuine voice. I'm going to look for how you approach the topic. 
I want some insight. I want some experience. I really want you guys to share with me as much as you can about yourself. So I said, oh my gosh, I know who this is. I, I got a real good feeling um, who, this, who this student is. When you go to put in your extracurricular activities, make sure you do not use acronyms because I may not understand what that acronym means. Also, if you are doing a volunteering opportunity or a fundraiser, if you could just give me a little bit of context what that opportunity is and what your role plays in that, it just makes it a lot better for me to connect with you. Application checklist. So we have the Common App and the Coalition App. The Richmond question, you only have to pick one. Very, very important at Richmond. You can submit your application, but your Richmond question doesn't come automatically. The reason why is you can submit your application to meet a deadline, but you still have two to three weeks to get the rest of your information in to us, okay? So if you're working on your Richmond question, just don't forget to go back in there and submit the button. Your high school transcript, your secondary school report come from your counselor. Recommendation letter, choir, only one. It can be either from a teacher or it can be from your guidance counselor. So we only require one. We spoke about the test option. So now you're probably thinking, what the heck is a spider portal, right? So you submit an application. Two weeks or so, you're gonna get an email from us with a link to your spider portal and with a URID number. You will go to your portal, create a password, click in, and then it opens up. You have an application tab and you have a checklist, um, checklist and then you have your financial aid checklist. So one-stop shopping, guys. Everything's gonna be there at your fingertips. It will literally check off everything we get. Before I can read your application and to be considered as a completed application, I have to have everything but your grades, okay? So how do you self-report? There are buttons in that spider portal. So you push a button, upload your grades. Push a button, upload your scores. All the instructions are there. It's very user-friendly. If you're looking at submitting any type of arts submission, you also do it through your spider portal, okay? For the financial aid side, same thing. Checklist, uh, tabs for that. So you, it's everything's right there. One-stop shopping, everything at your fingertips. Deadlines, woo! Cannot believe Sunday's November 1, but here we are. So if you go early decision one or early action, you are automatically considered for that Richmond Scholars Merit Scholarship, automatically. Okay, if you're looking at going early decision to a regular decision, you still have to apply by December 1 to be considered. The reason why it is quite the lengthy process. Last year, we had 7,500 applications. We moved a small group forward. Then the faculty read them. They're going to ask you either for a writing sample or they're going to give you a writing prompt. Then there is a Zoom interview and you'll find out about the latter part of February, early March if you are receiving one of the Richmond Scholars Merit Scholarships, okay? If you go early decision one or early decision two, they are binding. If admitted, you have to withdraw all of your application. Early action, the beauty with that is you still get to find out early, but it is non-restrictive. You can apply to us, you can apply to everybody else. If you are deferred, okay, ED1, ED2, or early action, if you're deferred, you're automatically put into that regular decision applicant pool. That's where I'm gonna read your application. If you're deferred out of ED1 or ED2, it releases you from that contract and you can go and apply ED anywhere else if you want to. I will tell you right now, out of that 836 that you saw for freshman year, 72% went ED1, ED2, or early action. So if you get nothing else out of this visit tonight, it is to apply early at Richmond. The other question I get is how do I find out and when? So remember that spider portal? You'll get an email that says there has been a update to your application. So you will go in, log in, and there's your decision. For ED1, you find out mid-January, early, I mean, sorry, mid-December. For early action, mid-January, early decision two, mid-February, and regular decision, you find out by April 1. Need-based aid. So what does it mean to be need blind? When you send me your application, I don't even know if you're applying for aid, has no bearing on your decision, has no bearing on your scholarship. I'm going to read it straight up for what I have before me. For demonstrated need, financial aid is going to need that FAFSA and that CSS profile. Not all colleges have a CSS profile, but we do. When you go to submit that, it will go through iDocs, which is through College Board, and there is a small fee to submit that, okay? 
If you have any questions about financial aid, you can do one of two things. You can go to the financial aid website. They'll have links to everything. They'll have everything, explanations to everything. Or if you'd rather talk to someone, you can definitely call our financial aid office. We have advi uh, financial advisors that actually answer the phone. Somebody live is there and they'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have. If you wanna kind of get an idea of what your financial aid packet could look like at this uh, website, there's also a net price calculator. Just know the more information you put in it, the truer the outcome's gonna be and closer to the um, aid package that you'll actually be awarded. There we are. Richmond Scholars Program, I just explained, that's a merit-based program out of our office. Remember that 7,500? We dwindled it down to about 300 and we awarded 25 scholarships. It is a very competitive process. Now, the big question I always get about merit aid is if somebody doesn't accept their award, does that mean it's there for the taking? No, there is never merit aid left on the table. So what happens on both of these uh, type programs, we always offer uh, more scholarships than we actually know people are going to take. Uh, it's a gamble every year, but we do that because we know students are looking at maybe four or five other colleges. For presidential scholarship, there's no separate application. We had 12,060 applications last year. We looked at those uh, presidential scholar for everybody, okay? How do you find out? You find out by going in to your decision letter and it will be there if you've uh, been awarded, okay? Both of these merit-based scholarships all for four years, as long as you meet the minimum requirements. The five below, um, they are outside of our department. They're in other departments at U of R. You can find a link to all of them um, on our financial aid website. One thing I will tell you for the Bonner Scholars Program, it's $5,000 a year, all four years, but you cannot apply for that unless you're enrolled at Richmond. And the reason why is because it, becomes, um, it comes with a uh, community service piece. So you really have to be enrolled and um, uh, part of the community before you can do the Bonner Scholar Scholarship. Last slide of the evening. This is Jepson Hall, spring two years ago. I missed spring this past spring and it's so upsetting. Um, but this is Jepson Hall. It is the uh, home of the Jepson School of Leadership. So to kind of give you a context of where it sits on campus, if you were to stand in the middle of that patio, you have four academic buildings that look very similar surrounding you. Down the hill a bit is that um, library that I told you has a mean cup of uh, espresso there. Then you come to the building that spans the lake. You walk through the building to the other side and Gottwald Science Center is there and the dining halls there. So everything academic and, and all library is all really close to each other. So you're not like running from one of the campus to the other. Everything is right there and convenient for you. As you can see, that is my email address, pgreen at richmond.edu. Pretty simple there. And if you have any questions uh, that you don't get answered tonight, please let me know. Um, so I'm all ears. Just a reminder, if any of our students have any questions, so go ahead and use the Q&A function. Sure. While you guys are thinking, two other things that I'll tell you that are super important, right? is car, can you bring your car your freshman year? You sure can, um, but I will tell you that it will sit in the commuter, the uh, student lot and the battery will die. That's what happens more times than not. I can tell you how many parents have told me they've had to come to Richmond and jumpstart a battery, but uh, you are allowed to have a car. The other thing is, do we have guaranteed housing? We do for freshmen only. Uh, we don't guarantee for all three years, but 97% of our students do live with us all four years. In fact, it's very hard to get them to leave. Um, they want to stay. So yeah, they do stay all four years with us. Um, there's three different types of living situations. You have your standard dorm, which is your freshman year. Then you have a suite style where you have a communal living in the, in the middle and then bedrooms on either side with a Jack and Jill bath. And then you can graduate to um, apartment living. We do have our own apartments on campus and it's great because you can opt in to the meal plan for any of those um, uh, living situations so you don't have to cook a meal. You can just go and swipe your card at the dining hall and get you something to eat. You can ask me any questions you want. Especially if you're a senior out there, this is a time to grab me. 
before I go into hibernation and start reading applications on Monday <laughs> with my cat Misha. We hang out all, all winter long. Maybe I don't, maybe we don't have any questions. <laughs> All right, well, I'll go ahead and wrap things up. I'll end the session here in just a few moments. Uh, a reminder for students, there will be a quick survey following the session. So please make sure to submit that. Uh, also a reminder to sign up for more sessions uh, if you have the availability to. And again, the recording will be available for this session uh, within the next week. Thank you so much to Priscilla for presenting tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. Sure. It's great. Thanks a lot.